So, what is going on guys, I'm Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video where today we are back with a Zombies Q&A, the series where I take your questions from the comment section below to do the Zombies storyline, easter eggs, and I answer them. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, drop a like, creatine, make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content, but let's get into it, here we go, and enjoy. So, the first question of the day from Sam says, hey BOA, I just want to know why Richtofen doesn't use the summoning key to kill the zombies. He might have survived if he used it in Blood of the Dead. This is my theory because the summoning key might be out of charge or he can't find other keepers to charge it. Just like he said in Dorizen Dracker, we need to charge the summoning key. Please answer. So I feel that is a good question because throughout a lot of our zombies maps, Richtofen or the premise crew have had the summoning key on them. They've been in difficult situations, as you mentioned, Blood of the Dead and plenty of other zombies maps. So having the most powerful artifact in any universe on them, you would think they would use it to help themselves, but they don't. And the reason for this, as you say, is it needs to be charged. As part of the Revelations Easter Egg, you need to place the summoning key at one of the green lights and then collect souls near it by killing zombies. This is going to charge the key where you then throw it at Sophia so she can shoot the shadow man. So that's the reason why Primus didn't use it before because it wasn't charged. The next question of the day from Joshua Thomas says, BOA, what is the point of maps with no way to complete it like Nact and Darius? Well, back in the older days of zombies, World at War and halfway through Black Ops 1, you will notice all of those maps, Nacta and Toten, Shino Numa, Verrucht, Darius, and then we go on to Black Ops 1, Kino De Toten, and 5, they don't have a main easter egg to complete. After that, we go to DLC 1 on BO1, which was Ascension, that had a main easter egg, DLC 2, Call of the Dead, that also had an easter egg, DLC 3 and 4, Shino Numa and Moon, had a main easter egg, so basically, every map after Kino and 5 had a main easter egg, but the ones before didn't, and it's just simply down to that was when Zombies was starting off. When Nakdir and Totem released, this was just supposed to be a simple, little fun mode for people to play. Treyarch didn't expect it to be anything, but they saw that people enjoyed it, so they released more and more maps for DLC 1, 2, and 3 for World at War. However, these maps didn't really have too much effort put into them. They were just ripped from the campaign and multiplayer with a few small changes. And I think that was the same for Black Ops 1 as well. Starting off with that game, I don't think Treyarch was sure if Zombies was gonna carry on from World at War, if people were still gonna be interested, hence why the two base maps on that game, Kino and 5, didn't have a mean easter egg. And then when they saw the success of Black Ops 1, because that's where it really started to take off, especially Kino de Toten, when they released DLC 1, that was when main easter eggs were introduced. Ascension was the first zombies map ever to have a easter egg that you can actually complete. Yes, there wasn't no ending cutscene or boss fight, those came quite a bit later on, but that's the reason why maps like Nacta and Toten, and as you say in this comment, Doris didn't have a way to be completed, or actually Doris did kind of have a small easter egg, but it was because zombies at that time wasn't big. They also didn't have a massive department working on it, so a lot of what we saw was just taken from the campaign and multiplayer. The older maps I would say were made more just for fun, and for people to play and get high rounds on, rather than being story related. The third question says, hey BOA, in the buried starting cinematic, what is the place where they were in the flooded city? Now looking at the buried intro cinematic, it shows Victus travelling from Dairise to Buried, from China to Angola. And as you would expect, doing that on foot, throughout their journey, they come across different locations. The first one that we see is this place right here, a city on fire. We have some of them standing on top of a vehicle. There is Stuhlinger on the ground, zombies surrounding them. This really could be anywhere. It could have been whilst they were still in China. And then another one of the locations that we see is Victus in another city. However, this time it is flooded. We have one character standing on a car and the rest in the water shooting at the undead. Where is this though? We don't know because, as I mentioned, they would have come across these locations whilst travelling from China to Africa. And if you actually take a look at Google Maps here, I've just pinpointed both the locations of Dairise and Buried. This isn't their exact location, but it's near enough. Even if it was anywhere in these two countries, you can see the distance between them is pretty much halfway around the world. It's absolutely massive. The Victor's crew would have walked from China to Africa and what makes this even more strange is they did it in just a couple of months which seems almost impossible. I mean I don't know how long it would actually take to walk halfway across the world especially one that was infected by zombies but I'm guessing 
it would have been more than two months. If you take a look at the Canorium, Die Rise takes place on October the 22nd, 2035, and Buried takes place a couple of months later on December the 31st. We know after completing the Die Rise Easter Egg and linking the second polarization device for Maxis, the voices of both Richtofen and Maxis went away, leaving Victors to wander the Earth for two months. That's when they travelled from China to Africa. But getting back to your main question, where is this flooded city? Well, we don't know exactly. It could have been anywhere between the locations that they walked. It could be any city in any country, any continent. But they would have been to many more locations like this. Maybe depending on which direction they went, they could have gone through India, Pakistan, and then through Iraq, Saudi Arabia. We know they clearly went through Egypt because we can see in the background, at the beginning of the Buried Intro cinematic, there are the pyramids, so they clearly pass through Egypt. Angola, the location of Buried, is near to the bottom of Africa. So yeah, the flooded city is just one of many locations that they would have passed through whilst travelling to Buried. The next question says, what if, now hear me out, but what if Little Eddie grows up and finds a way to bring back Dempsey and Nikolai? Like, all of this could happen in BO5, who knows? And that reminds me because this week or soon I want to make a video about BO5, giving my thoughts on what I want to see in the game, what I want to see brought over from BO4 Zombies, which isn't very much. BO3, BO2, BO1, and I guess even World at War Zombies. Although pretty much everything from that game is standard in a zombies game. But I just want to make a video saying what I think BO5 zombies should include. So let me know in the comment section below some of the features that I should add into there. What would you like to see return from other games and what wouldn't you like to see? But getting back to your question, you're asking is it possible that Eddie in the future could find a way to bring back the premise crew? And I would say no. I honestly believe the Ether story is finished. If we are going to carry on with it, it's either going to be a reboot or they'll come up with a new one. But let's just say for the sake of this question, if we were to carry on from where we left off, Samantha and Eddie are in a new universe in themselves, Primus are dead and pretty much everything else is sent to the Dark Aether. Is it possible that Eddie could go on to find a way to bring Dempsey and Nikolai and I guess Takio and Richtofen back? I mean, we know Richtofen's smart, so you would assume once Eddie grows up, he's going to become as smart as his other versions, but have we seen people being brought back to life before? From what I can think right now off the top of my head, we haven't. I don't think there's a character in our zombie storyline that's been brought back from the dead. We have had people like Sophia, who's been killed and then her brain's been put inside of a robot. But premise in our zombie storyline are dead, and the dimension that they died in would have been destroyed. So I can't really see what possible way there would be to bring them back. I mean, technically, Richtofen is still alive because he's Eddie, but Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takio aren't, so I'd have to say no. The next question says, Hey BOA, if Dr. Monty helps out Primus, Ultimus, and Victus with perks, power-ups, pack-a-punch, etc., then why does he give them to all of these random marines in maps like Transit and World at War maps? So basically you're asking, if Dr. Monty is only supposed to be helping out the Primus, Ultimus, and Victus crew, why does he just randomly help all of these other characters as well, such as the Marines in Nactar and Totem, or the Call of the Dead cast, the Mob of the Dead crew, all of these maps that we have other random characters on, they are given the mystery box, the perk machines, and power-ups by Dr. Monty, so you're asking, why is Monty also helping them? And the answer to that one would be, since everything is entwined into one giant cycle, these maps that involve these random characters, such as Call of the Dead, Nact, Mob of the Dead, they all have a role to play within the cycle. Five was important because without the events taking place at the Pentagon, we wouldn't have Division 9, we wouldn't have the teleporter being built at Groom Lake, which means a load of other events involved in that, Moon and Nuketown, wouldn't have happened in the same way. The same goes for Mob of the Dead. Without that happening, we wouldn't have the blood vials, which were an integral part to the cycle. Premise drinking the blood vials in the first place is what continued the cycle, which is what Dr. Monty wanted. Nactar and Totem is a little bit of a strange one. If that map didn't happen, would it affect the cycle? Because nothing major happens there, there's no big easter egg. Maybe there's something on the sidelines that we don't know. Possibly if the outbreak didn't happen there, then maybe the Americans wouldn't have a warning about an outbreak and go into drastic measures or something like that, create Division 9. We don't really know. But it seems like with every random group that Dr. Monty has helped by giving them power-ups and perks, he has done that for a reason. They are still a part of the cycle. If those maps didn't happen, then the cycle wouldn't continue. And so, 
there we go that is it guys that is all i have for you for today's video as always hopefully you have enjoyed if you have you know what to do drop a like rating if you want to if not it's totally fine thank you guys for watching anyway make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content and i will see you guys in the next one leave your questions down below and until then goodbye